Welcome to our Artistic Adventures. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a look at all of the dolls that I have currently. And these are some of my older dolls as well. So let's get started. As I said in my previous video on the thrift store haul, I wanted to show you guys some of my older dolls and give you a walk down memory lane. And it's sort of fun with me too because I haven't seen some of these dolls in a while. They've been packed away. Uh, we did a trip down the intercoastal in our sailboat last year and before we settled in Florida. And so I had all these dolls uh, wrapped up in boxes. And this was a great time to pull them out and give them a new place and our new home. So I'm getting a sort of a reintroduction to my dolls, which was really kind of nice. This is the first 17 inch doll that I did. It's 17 inch Monster High Draculara. And I wanted to do a fairy queen look. I, I was inspired a little bit by the Lord of the Rings movies <laughs> and I loved all the characters there so this was kind of my tribute to them. As you can see she's wearing a really gorgeous gown. Uh, all of these are found items from thrift stores or items that were donated to me by different people and I think she turned out really awesome. I sort of built the dress around this item that I found at a thrift store I'm sorry, this wasn't at a thrift store. This was at a a jewelry store that had, like, lots of old jewelry for sale for really cheap. So it was kind of like a jewelry thrift store. Anyway, I found this. It was a, a pin, and I had to bend it a little bit to make it go around her waist, but I just really thought it was a interesting piece, and so I thought adding it to it with this leaf motif on her, on her sash would be a great addition. Also, um... I made this crown that is completely handmade by me with using found items and then glued some crystals on it. Give you a sort of a view of that. Pardon my camera work, you know, my hand is still wrapped up, so I'm trying to use my right hand as much as possible. All right. Now, if you notice her hair, this was some of the most beautiful alpaca hair that I ever used. Look how long it is. And Julie, if you're watching, Julie from Alpaca Meadows, this was one of your uh, alpaca hair contributions. <laughs> and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't remember which of the alpacas it came from, but so long and beautiful. And it made a wonderful wig for this fairy type doll. So that was my 17 inch doll. I think I can get a fairly good full length picture here. And now I'm going to turn around and show you some of the 11 inch smaller dolls that I that I worked on a long time ago. All right, hang on, here we go. I was quick tour my room. <laughs> it's a big mess. We had a hurricane here last October and it blew off our roof and our carport and also the room that I'm in was water damaged and we just got our carport put back on last month so it's been almost like seven months that we've been dealing with all this and we couldn't really do anything until then because we were still having some leaking so a lot of the paneling in here is warped or pulled off the walls uh, we have to completely redo the bathroom and pull up the floor so all this is in in working uh, order right now so if you caught a glimpse of the mess I apologize but uh, think Hurricane Matthew for all that. So before I, well, I don't know if I can show this from here. Up on this ledge is all of the dolls that we've been working on recently. So if you've been watching my videos, you probably recognize them from left to right. The Harajuku girl, then the steampunk girl, and um, actually that one next one is an older doll. I called her the Spanish Princess, and next to her is my Silkstone Barbie, then the Japanese doll, the Obitsu 1-6 scale that I redid and added hair and face and a little grunge costume. And then there's the Chinese doll, and of course the last one was Bellatrix. So those are all kind of new dolls, and you're probably familiar with them. The ones I'm going to show you next are older dolls that I made quite a while ago. Alright, so let's get back down here 
and I'm going to, while I'm doing this, I have to hook up to my field monitor so I can see what's going on. Since I won't be behind the camera, I have it on a, a tripod so it won't be so unsteady with me holding it and I can point to things on the dock. Okay, my camera cut off there for a minute and I'm not sure where I was. Let me restart with this doll. This is the first doll that I ever remade. She's a Monster High doll and I got her originally from a, a huge batch that I bought from eBay. I think I bought about 30 dolls in this batch and got them for probably around three dollars each or something like that. This was quite a while back. And um, I wanted to make her into a flower fairy. That was the theme that I wanted. And I also made this little bunny. I felted this little bunny to have her holding sort of a uh, forest creature, I guess, <laughs> as she's posing for you. And um, her dress is just this really pretty, vibrant color um, that I gathered. And I put some felt leaves on her sleeves with a little bit of beading, if you can see that. And she has an alpaca hair wig. And I did make her a little wreath to wear. The wings are attached. I actually drilled holes in her back and stuck the wings in her back. That's how they're attached. So this is a really, this is really the oldest doll that I have. And I can see, you know, things about her that I think I would like to change. I think, obviously, I think her wig is not as well made as I make them now. And, um, you know, maybe a few other things that I would change. So some of these dolls I might actually go back and redo. Although, you know, there's some sentimentality to her being my very first doll. <laughs> so that's... Her. And then the next doll I did was a, this is a um, Bratz doll. And this is the first Bratz doll that I did. And she's, um, you know, plain, she has more of a plain face. And I did actually paint her face with acrylics. So she's not, oh, I just realized I don't have my other light on. Okay. So, um, she's painted with acrylics as opposed to using watercolor pencils, which was a different experience. And uh, I ended up using her same hair. I didn't give her a wig, but I did cut it because it was kind of damaged. And then this scarf, this was a, like a scarf, I guess, that had this embroidery on it. And I used that on the front of the dress. And actually, this was also something that my friend Deb gave me, the seamstress, so I called this doll Deb the Teenage Seamstress <laughs> and as a tribute to my friend who, who sends me lace and other cute things that I use in my doll making. And then I did another Bratz doll. That's this doll. And she's her name is Kelly. She was going to a high school dance. And I did her more with the the pencils and the pastels that I use on Monster High. But if you'll notice the shine on her face, I actually used the high gloss, no, I'm sorry, not the high gloss, the matte finish from Liquitex, but I used it with a brush. So what I found is that when I use it with a brush, it actually still comes out shiny. So I'm going to end up redoing this doll's face because I don't like the shine on it. Although I did like her expression and that sort of thing. But um, that's when I started using the airbrush and I, I've realized after that you'll see the difference in this doll which does not have the shine. It's more of a matte finish. So I've been experimenting with these finishes for a while and I also have used the Krylon clear coat matte finish. So this was a doll I did sometime after Kelly and another Bratz doll, but I did use uh, the watercolor pencils and pastels on this doll also. And all of these have clothes that I made and uh, accessories that I made to go with them. Alright, so I'm going to move these guys out of the way. And if you noticed in the back there is my, my Blith doll, Blythe doll, Bella, and she's wearing a really cute outfit with little cute boots. 
I'd love to dress her up. I just love Blythe dolls. I think they are so expressive. Now, this is a doll that, um, a couple of things I want to show you. First of all, I just adore these African print fabrics. They're so vibrant and colorful. And I wanted to do a tribute to the African prints and make my own version of an African style uh, dress. More of the modern kind, of course, not trying to be traditional because I don't know that much about it, actually. But um, if you'll notice, it's in layers. There's like petals um, asymmetrical that come down. And then she has this sash that's gathered at the shoulder and comes around the back. And then I like to use these found items that I get at um, thrift stores or wherever, uh, found jewelry items. This was a part of a necklace that I took off and I liked it because it had some bright colors in it that sort of complemented the outfit. And then she does have a full wig. Uh, the Let me see if I can raise this up a little bit. Okay, There's her headdress. She does have a full wig under here with uh, pretty dark alpaca hair that I've twisted up into a, a bun on the top of her head and then I added the headdress. So this was my tribute to the African print fabrics. Um, I don't know if you can see her face, but this was a, another big mistake that I made, and I'm going to redo her face. But the, um, the coating that I put on it was done on a very humid day, and it has bubbled up uh, on her face, the final coating. So I'm going to redo her face and Maybe do that in a, a future video. I'll be redoing some of these dolls and uh, give her a better coating. Now that I'm in Florida, I mean, it can be humid here, but honestly, it's it's really hot most of the time, so I don't have that much trouble. And it's just one of the things you have to deal with when you're making dolls. Now, this doll I call Astrid the Dew Sprite, and she has a really pretty costume made out of three layers. One is tulle on the bottom, then a chiffon fabric, and then this sort of net fabric that has a floral design that I cut into leaves, and then I added Swarovski crystals to the leaves, and then I put a found object here on the V of her collar. And then I added a couple props. This is supposed to be her dew collecting bottle, and I put rhinestones that I popped out of some old jewelry that I bought um, and put in there as little drew, dew droplets and uh, then I also added this bracelet made out of pink wire. And let me show you her, her lag wrappings, not really shoes, are just wire that I wrapped around. And I added blue Swarovski crystal to the toes for some decoration. And her hairstyle, this is made out of silk. The wig is made out of silk. And I put the silk weave underneath the edge of this wig cap so when I folded it up you know you didn't see it and then I, I sort of teased up this hair and I think I actually put a bunch of uh, wadded up old silk that I had pulled out when I combed it to to make this bouffant hairdo because I just wanted her to look kind of uh, you know like a like a sprite I don't know that was my idea of a sprite and I added the little flower and the little doodad here. Now she was another doll that I used the matte Liquitex varnish on with a brush and she's very very shiny so I'm probably going to be redoing her face as well because I would like for it to have a matte finish. So that's Astrid the Dew Sprite. And then this was an older doll that I did. Um, I love her face She's, I think she's got a really sweet face. She has long white alpaca hair wig that I just braided. And then I made her this little outfit. She's got on little, um, these are actually raw silk pantaloons, sort of a um, violet color. And then this pretty overskirt and this jacket. She has a necklace with a crystal, if you can see that. And then I put a bunch of flowers, and I call her Violet the Flower Girl. She reminds me sort of the Cockney Flower Girl with her, her cute expression. 
she has a little ring on this finger which is just a crystal that I attached and then her feet I put socks on which I made out of out of um, that violet chiffon and then some lace that my friend Deb gave me and a little purple flower and that's Violet the Flower Girl. And next we have Sheba the Moon Goddess. This doll, if you look at my curly wig making video, is the doll that I used. And this is just the, um, it's really inexpensive curly hair that you can get at Michael's or whatever in a bag. It just comes, it's like a one huge spaghetti of hair. And you pull it out. And I show you in that video on curly wigs how you can turn that into a really pretty easy wig where you just put glue on the glue cap basically and smoosh it down on the doll's head. Um, and I used found items in this doll. This is These are all parts of a bracelet that has mother of pearl inlaid in some black material. And then I made her a crown out of wire and attached this piece to it. And then this was a, a piece that I sort of broke off of another design on that bracelet to add to that. And then her dress is uh, black material with a pretty um, black and white print design in, inserted. It's long. And then I have, if you remember in the other video I showed you, this was um, the scarf that I showed you that had the pretty embroidery and the um, rhinestones on it. I've had that for a while, actually. That wasn't something new. I just wanted to show you how you can get interesting designs. And then in the back, I've let that sort of drape down and gather so she has this sort of train. It's sort of interesting. So that's Sheba the Moon Goddess, which she got her name because I thought this crown sort of looked like a moon, half moon, or actually quarter moon, I guess. And I, do, I love her face, but also she's one that I used the... Um, matte varnish on that that ended up being shiny because I put it on with a paintbrush so I may go back and redo her face uh, also she is the doll that has that had teeth or fangs and I had to use an exacto to get rid of the fangs because I wanted her to just have a regular smile so I just carved that raised fang part off of her teeth and then when I did her face, it ended up looking like she just had teeth and not fangs. So that's her. And then another doll that I made is um, this doll's Gabriella. And the concept I had for her was somewhat of a throwback to the, I don't know, Louis the Fourteenth style where you have the She's got these pantaloons, silk pan satin pantaloons, and then these stockings, lace stockings with the garter. Uh, and it has a gold bow and a little button. And then she's got this pretty dress that's gathered in places and has roses that I made out of ribbon. So I just gathered some sort of tan colored rib ribbon at the base and then tied it in a knot and then sewed it on. And she has those interspersed around on her gown. This is another doll that had gorgeous alpaca hair and so long and silky, really beautiful hair. And then her dress trails out behind her. And um, I don't know if you can see, I'm having trouble maneuvering this with my, my gimp, gimpy hand. But this overskirt comes down to a point in the back. It's kind of hard to see with these stands. And then the bodice is made out of a metallic brocade. And her headdress also is found objects that I added some crystals to. And then some chain, which also has little crystals interspersed on it. And I thought that gave her an interesting look with the draping chain around her neck. So that doll is also pretty old. Now this doll, I keep this doll out. She's the model in a lot of my videos. You may recognize her, especially I think some of the purse videos that I made. I keep this doll. I'm not going to ever try to sell her because she has a silk wig, silk fiber wig. And she's the doll that I made this for in the video on wig making. So you can watch that and see how I made her wig. 
and I don't want to ever try to sell her because the silk fiber is really beautiful. It's so soft and shiny and it, it lays down nicely in the haircut, but it's very fragile. It, it's very easy to get messed up. I really have to just leave her out and not really mess with her a lot. And I don't think she'd be an appropriate doll to try to sell uh, anyway because of, of the wig. But I did fix this dress. This is actually a Monster High mini dress. And I cut this off of another dress and attached it to it. So she's got this um, tall bottom to that mini dress, which is kind of cool. So that's really all of my the dolls that I have around me now. Some of them are very old uh, or old for me. Some of them are newer and some of them are for sale on my Etsy site and uh, I do have a link in the description, the main description box, not the one for this video if you're interested in looking at them there. Um, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and I'll try to think of some other creative ideas that I can do with one hand in my next video. I know some of the audio in this video is not great, but we have about two and a half more weeks until I get the use of my left hand back, and then things will be a lot better. And we'll get back to that porcelain doll project. So subscribe and don't miss a thing. Thanks.